Good morning. And on behalf of the Council of Muslim Organizations of the Greater Washington Area, I'd like to thank everyone for coming out this morning to respond to uh, the atrocities that are occurring in Nigeria, uh, fermented by the organization known as Boko Haram. These groups have been gathered together to send a very clear message, a message from our community that this behavior will not stand. We have brought primarily uh, the Nigerian American Muslim community uh, from their national associations to be able to present to us not just the perspective of Islam, but the perspective of Nigerians who, who live with this reality daily from their friends and relatives and loved ones. We will begin first uh, with Zainab Chowdhury uh, from the Council on American Islamic Relations, then the representative from MPACT, AMA, ISNA, and then the Nigerian uh, Council will make its presentations. We'll have an opportunity uh, to hear an action plan, action items that are being put forward by organizations to help in this crisis, and then we'll have time for some one-on-ones. I'd like to ask now uh, Zainab Chowdhury from CARE to come forward to read their statement. Thank you, Imam Jahari. In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful, assalamu alaikum and good morning. I need to ask you, as is the etiquette, to spell your name and your title. My first name is Zainab, Z-A-I-N-A-B. My last name is Chaudhry, C-H-A-U-D-R-Y. And I am the co-founder and chair of the Maryland Outreach Office of the Council on American Islamic Relations. I'm here as a representative of the Council on American Islamic Relations, the nation's largest Muslim civil rights and advocacy organization, to add my voice to the strong chorus calling for the protection and prompt release of all of the Nigerian schoolgirls who remain in captivity by the terrorist cult Boko Haram so that they may return safely to their grief-stricken families. It is narrated that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, God has created nothing on the face of the earth dearer to him than emancipation. There are also numerous narrations in which the Prophet Muhammad emphasized seeking knowledge. According to one tradition, he advised that someone who sets forth in knowledge is busy in the cause of God until he returns from his quest. The very first verse revealed in the Quran by Allah, or God, commands, us, commands all people ikra, to read. There is no distinction between male and female. According to Islam, acquiring knowledge is incumbent upon all people. In another tradition, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, if anyone travels on a road in search of knowledge, God will cause him to travel on one of the roads of paradise. The angels will lower their wings in their great pleasure with one who seeks knowledge. The inhabitants of the heavens and earth and even the fish in deep waters will ask forgiveness for the learned man and woman. Top religious scholars across the globe have spoken out against this crime, saying that it is against all humanitarian principles and clearly violates the Quran and Sunnah of the Prophet. Boko Haram is a vicious cult that claims to follow Islam, but its obscene, unconscionable acts make it clear that in reality it knows no faith. As a Muslim woman and as a human being, I am horrified, appalled, and disturbed by the circumstances that these girls have been forced to endure, all because they wish to acquire an education. Time is of the essence. My organization strongly urges the immediate use of any and all resources possible to locate all of the schoolgirls that remain in captivity and grant them safe passage in returning home to their loved ones. Thank you and Jazakallah Hair. We'll now have from the uh, Muslim Public Affairs Council MPACT, Huda El Shishtawi. 
Thank you, Imam Johari. Good morning, and thank you all for being here today. Uh, my name is Hoda El Shishtawi. That's H O D A. My last name E L S H I S H T A W I. And I am the National Policy Analyst with the Muslim Public Affairs Council. Today, the Muslim Public Affairs Council and all of these representatives that stand here with us today condemn the repugnant actions of Boko Haram, who have kidnapped nearly 300 teenage school girls from a school in Nigeria three weeks ago. They have violated, once again, core Islamic teachings that value all human life as sacred. They prohibit depriving people of their basic freedoms and mandate seeking knowledge as an obligatory duty of all and every single Muslim. Next we will have from the uh, American Muslim Alliance, my good friend and brother Mahdi Bray, uh, who was the first person to call me to say that we must, uh, as a community, do something and say something. Mahdi Bray. Thank you, Imam. In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful, I'm Mahdi. M-A-H-D-I, Bray, B-R-A-Y. I'm the National Director of the American Muslim Alliance. We are indeed a social justice and economic justice advocacy organization with focus on human rights and civil rights. I'm here today because I remember something that Dr. King said is that there is a time when silence is betrayal. That's right. And therefore, we must speak out against these horrendous acts of violence against our, and notice I use the word our, because they're all our children, they're all our girls. And we must speak out against this. This is an anathema to the Islamic faith. Also, Congressman, uh, Andre Carson has sent a representative to read a statement from the congressman. This is Jalila Kofo Idowu. How'd I do? Good. I did good? Yes. <laughs> All right. Don't forget to, to spell your name. Yes. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, oh. did, did I mention that, that uh, Andre Carson is one of the two Muslim in Congress? Did I mention? I don't know if I no, mentioned. No, no, no. Oh, that's important to me. But man. we know. Um, the congressman apologizes for um, his absence today, but he sends um, a message in solidarity of um, our stance today. And he says that um, I join today with my fellow Muslim Americans to call for the immediate release of these young women. As a father of a young girl, I can only imagine what these families are going through. I condemn strongly the actions of these group, of this group, and support the actions of our nation's effort to locate and rescue these girls. I would also like to ask our partners in the international community to be vigilant and work together to find the missing women and return them safely to their families. These horrific actions cannot stand, and we join our hearts in prayer for these young women. Please bring our girls back home. Thank you. Thank you. alaikum. Uh, my name is uh, Taufik Ali. Uh, Taufik as uh, T A O F E E Q. Ali is A L L I. Um, I'm here to represent uh, the Nigerian, uh, the National Council of Nigerian Muslim Organization and the USA, uh, known as NCNMO. NCNMO is the umbrella of the registered Nigerian Muslim uh, organization throughout the United States and, um, and Canada. And here in Washington, we have masjid uh, organization like Nigerian Muslim Council, uh, located in Brentwood. We have uh, a Saudi uh, Muslim uh, organization, and we have the uh, um, Beautiful Lie. So we have, the uh, we have all the representatives from here. 
Af Af and also we have Avandir Islamic Center. Um, with me here, we have the national president by the name uh, Tes Alaji Teslim Olarinde is, is the current national president. Uh, I was, I'm the you know, former president. Uh, also, we have our general secretary is Isaac Akinyade. Akin is, is not here with us today. And also, we have our local chairman uh, by the name Fatai uh, Koletowo. And we have our uh, general secretary, local general secretary, uh, Mr. Akim Karim, uh, who's going to present this speech uh, to us today. And also, we have our imam, chief imam, uh, Yusuf Juma Olaleye. And uh, we have uh, our uh, youth imam, Jamil uh, Salami, and other representatives. I will now uh, leave the podium for Akim Karim to present the, our speech. Uh, thank you, uh, Brother Ali. My name is Akim Karim, spelled H A K E E M, Karim, K A R E E M. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wassalatu wassalam Allah Rasulullah. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. We, the Nigerian Muslims, living in the U.S., unambiguously, unconditionally, and unambiguously condemn the bazaar acts of the backward and archaic bandits known as Boko Haram. That was powerful. <laughs> that was powerful. There's no doubt that the message has been sent clear, and I would like to say that groups like Boko Haram desire to take us back to a medieval and to reintroduce a world which kidnapping of women and girls, enslavement and rape are acceptable. It is clear from the presentation of these Nigerian Muslims uh, that we loudly reject this, and the world has changed, and they need to understand that Clearly, people of all faiths reject the notion of kidnapping girls, and we have, not, we have failed to mention that they have been burning boys alive. In particular, we are saying as modern-day Muslims that we now reject all of these acts and that they are contrary to our faith. Education is one of the greatest counter-terrorism uh, programs that we can put forward. These cults, like the Taliban and Boko Haram, uh, prey on the ignorance of people in order to get them involved in this type of activity and radicalize them because they're illiterate and impoverished. That's right. The only difference is the sad part is that we're here today not because Islam failed the people of Nigeria. Islam did not fail the people of Nigeria the government of Nigeria failed to apprehend a bunch of criminals. Imagine if uh, 200 girls were kidnapped right here in any city in the United States, and the police did not do anything about it, the governor did not do anything about it, the FBI did not do anything about it, the president did not do anything about it, members of Congress are silent, do you think there would be outrage? There would be outrage. Look at what happened when the government did not pay attention to its people after Hurricane Katrina. There was outrage. People were fending for themselves, and some people had to pay the price. What's happening there is not because Islam is the problem, and we're tired of people coming on television and examining, well, where does this ideology come from? This ideology comes from nowhere. This ideology, if you even want to call it that, this ideology of crime. You don't ask criminals, why do you, you know, where do you get your ideology? They're, they're, these are kidnappers. Kidnapping happens all over this country all the time, but the difference is we have institutions that go after, goes after criminals, apprehends them, and brings them to justice. So the first comment is, Islam did not fail the people of Nigeria. The government of Nigeria failed its own people. Islam did not fail here. Islam is not the problem, ignorance is the problem. That's right. 
Islam is not the problem. Extremism and violent extremism is a problem, which is a result of many other factors of people that are in Africa that they're facing, whether it's poverty, whether it's lack of resources, whether it's the exploitation of their resources by other people. We're not trying to justify things, but Islam is not the problem. We didn't ask, is Christianity the problem when the Lord's... Um, Resistance. Res the Lord's... Uh, is it called resistance? So yeah, the LRA. Yeah. We didn't ask, is Christianity the problem when the Lord's resistance army and Kony, their leader, was kidnapping, enslaving young children and boys, doing the exact same thing that this other criminal is doing. We didn't ask what Kony's religion is or where is his ideology coming from. These criminals in Boko Haram are not any different than the, the criminals that Kony led. And just as the United States is dedicating resources now to go into Uganda and other places to apprehend Kony and the LRA, they should also take this in the same fashion. And the international community should work together to make sure that criminals are being held to account. And to the president in Nigeria, he should be held accountable to his people and should not use this and ignore this as for political gains. And what we want to do is have something positive come out of this because you know, one of the reasons that, we, that, that, that we're here is because we're also very upset about what's happening there and outraged that no one is doing anything about it. People are talking about it. The news media is talking about it. Nobody, who's actually going there to free these girls? When they dedicate so many resources and so many drones and so many things to, for other violence where it you know, actually ends up killing girls, why don't we use our technology and our resources for something that's positive? Save our girls. To save the girls. We have drone technology. Come on we have uh, surveillance technology. The NSA knows where anyone is any time of the day. They have cell phones. They're able to apprehend people. Why don't we dedicate these resources to actually saving people if we're serious about it? But if it's just rhetoric and to try to put a specific group down, that's going to be unacceptable.